Yeah, let's do that because it sounds like Killing Machine. Oh, now I'm really curious. <laughs> Somewhere in Time is my favorite record. You did scare us a lot. I love the cut scenes you do. It's outrageous. I hope you don't hate me for that, man, though. Steve, he's a, he's a freak of nature, man. Oh, look at that guitar. Ripping off Zach Wilde, Michael Schenker, and Dave Murray. That's all you can do, and I'm still doing that. Hello, you and a very special welcome to all those who follow our Defenders of the Faith series. For today, I am more than happy and honored to welcome nobody else but Richie Faulkner here. Richie, thank you so much the for the time. How are you, man? The metal pilgrim, man. The, the pleasure and the honor is all mine, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you doing well. Good to see you still on air, flying the flag for metal. And it's just really good to see you, brother. The pleasure is all mine, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richie. Thank you. It means a lot to me, man. Where are you, by the way, at the moment? Uh, we are uh, about an hour outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Nice. Music City. Nice. Yeah. I yeah, love that place. I, I've been to Nashville several times. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good fun, man. It's, yeah. uh, we're, we're far enough out of it to be outside of the madness, but <laughs> close enough if you want a little bit of madness. You know what I mean? So yeah. we're in a good spot. Yeah. All right, Richie. So, of course, you know, let's just jump right into it. The biggest news about you these days, in addition to the upcoming Priest album, and we'll talk about that later on, of course, but your new band, Elegant Weapons, um, you know, and the, the upcoming release of your debut record. First of all, congrats on, you know, on doing it, man. Uh, I think it's it's amazing. I think it's great that you're doing it, man. So, first of all, why now? Why did you decide to start a brand new band today in 2023? And how did this idea just overall well, it's, it's, a, it's a long answer, really, it, and there's a few different reasons. I mean, I joined, you remember I joined the band in 2011. Uh, it was the final world tour. Uh, Priest, uh, 40 years in at that point. Um, uh, you know, I had a conversation with Glenn about the fact that the band aren't going to be around for 20, 25 years. And, um, you know, I, it was, I was made aware that I needed to start thinking about what I'm going to be doing after Priest. They, they, they'll pro I'll probably be around longer than Priest will be touring, you know, joining the band at that point on a farewell tour. Mm -hmm. the, the idea was that that was going to be it. Luckily, that wasn't what happened. You know, I'm still here talking to you. There's firepower in the background there. <laughs> we're still, you know, we're making a new record. We're doing new tours. The, the world is a better place for it, you know. But at the time, that wasn't really... That wasn't the plan. So I had to start thinking about what life was going to be like after Priest. So it started back then, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I also didn't want to be one of these guys that gets a, gets a gig like Priest and then straight away listen to, listen to my other band. You know, I, I thought that was inappropriate as well, you know. So Priest, you know what it's like as well. Like Priest made me such a member of the family and the fans welcomed me in. Um, and they made me part of it and I wanted to give back a thousand percent. So, you know, Priest was my band. That's my band now. Uh, so it wasn't really a priority as such, you know, it kind of, and as I said, fortunately, we, we made Redeemer of Souls. We were out on a Redeemer of Souls tour. We made Firepower. We we're on that tour. We're still going. Um, the, the, the pandemic came up. Um, and no one was doing anything. So I had a bit of time to get some ideas that I'd been working on over the, the you know, a couple of years prior, some song ideas, and melodies and stuff like that. Um, and the Priest record that we're working on now, a lot of the creative ideas and riffs and melodies and the song structures were already written. So I didn't have to write anything more for that. So it was a, it was a perfect time really to sit down and get all those ideas that I had and see do I have songs? Do I have an EP? Do I have an album? Do I have a band? Do I have a touring band? You know, all that sort of stuff. So it's a, I told you it was a long answer. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> we have all you know, time. But that, that's what it was, you know, um, there, all those reasons. Um, and I wanted it to sound different to Priest. There's no point, again, that they were gracious enough to let me co-write with them. Uh, and if it sounded like Priest, well, then that, that's what we do in Priest. There's no point, you know. So I wanted it to sound, it's, obviously it's going to have the same DNA from my part, um, but it just might take on a different slant or maybe without Glenn's guitar uh, influence, it might take on its own um, character. So it was important to me that it had its own character and it did. So uh, I went from there really. So there's a long answer to an easy question. <laughs> 
I actually was able to listen to the record a bit earlier than most of mortal human beings. And I got to say, I love it. And I absolutely agree with you that, you know, you know, when when you especially come in with a solo or something, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that's Richie. I, I, I can, you know, unmistakably say that this is Richie Faulkner. But at the same time, it does not sound like a, you know, I don't want to say a, a priest ripoff or any, in any way or something like that. It does not sound like a follow up to firepower. Let's just say, call it like that. No way. I like it. I mean, that, make, that makes me very proud, for, you know, to hear that, man. I mean, it's always been a challenge for me to have my own sound. Um, I, I mean, my influences I've always worn on my sleeve. I mean, it's always been Schenker and Zach Wilde and Dave Murray, you know, and for me, that's all I sound like, you know. So I've always I strive to sound like my own character. So if if it does sound like that to someone and someone puts it on and says, oh, that's Richie, that's mission accomplished. That's all I've ever wanted to achieve. So I appreciate that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, when you get in a band like Priest, those characters shape the sound. And the combination of those guys, it sounds like Priest. So uh, I think it was going to sound different. But, um, you know, you never know until you do it. And so I, I had to try something. And uh, fortunately, it came out well. That's awesome. man. So how supportive were the Priest guys when you told them that, hey, I want to do a side gig, basically? Very supportive. Very supportive. I, I think because of the nature of, of the band. And, you know, as I said, that conversation with, with Tipton over 10 years ago, um, it's always been um expected really that someday it's going to happen um uh, rob's always done things outside of priest um and fortunately we had a year this year mm -hmm. especially with the aussie dates not happening we had a completely free year from priest so nothing conflicted you know the album we could release the album this month i could do some dates and stuff like that so nothing conflicted um, I showed Rob actually a couple of years ago. I had some early versions of these songs, and I showed him, uh, and he was he was really interested. He really liked them. Um, so you know, I, you know, they they didn't say don't do it. So I took that as you know, it's it's okay. So management were fine. Um, so yeah, I just, I just pushed on and did it, and everyone seemed okay with it. And you know, working with such iconic guys as Rob Halford, Glenn Tipton, Ian Hill, and you know, and uh, Scott now as well, you know. Of course, you when you write, and especially since you wrote an album with them before that, two albums before that, right, already, you kind of, I assume, have in the back of your mind, you know, kind of imagine someone singing it already. So was it hard for you to imagine somebody else but Rob singing the lyrics or, you know, Glenn doing a second guitar uh, and stuff like that? And did you have someone specific in mind when you were writing this record? Initially, um initially when you're writing stuff like this it, it had a different sort of flavor so there is a bit more license to think of different voices but of course you, you're right you know you know firepower redeemer of souls uh you get used to working with rob's voice like that so you, your first instinct is to think of rob's voice but i did have, i did have some other ideas mm -hmm. uh of who could potentially uh sing on this um and then you know it kind of evolves from there. I mean, one of, one of my, uh, I mean, I, I would have, there was a point I was thinking like, I would have loved to have got Lizzie Hale on <laughs> one of the, at least one of these tracks. I love Lizzie's voice. I love Lizzie, um, you know, something different, but you know, you go, when you're writing this stuff, there's no, there's no constraints on it. It, it could be, you know, what about this person? What about that person? Um, and I remember when Ronnie came up, I need, you know, looking for a singer, Ronnie's name came up and I was talking to Damon Johnson yeah. uh, from Thin Lizzy and um, Leonard Skinner and he mentioned Rainbow and uh, the singer in Rainbow. I said, of course, Ronnie Romero is perfect because it's got Ronnie's got that classic DNA and influence, but he's a singer in 2023. So that's the same as this music. It's, we, we know where the influences come from, uh, but it's also a record in 2023. So he was perfect. So I called him up and uh, we had a we had a chat and uh, we went from there. So I was really grateful to get Ronnie on board. Oh, he did an amazing job. And I think he's one of the greatest new vocalists in the world of hard rock and heavy metal. This for sure. I mean, there's no doubt in that. And, uh, you know, what about the other guys? Because you you recorded the record with Rex and Scott, but then, uh, you know, you switched the lineup when it comes to live touring. Was that always an idea, the idea? or And why why did you decide to go with a different set of musicians for recording and then for touring? Well, at the time when it was recorded, um, you know, I wasn't sure if, you know, what the touring situation was going to be. Um, 
you know, I was just fortunate enough to be able to call Rex and Scott and say, would you be able to do this record? Um, and then kind of I took it from there. Um, luckily for me, they, they were both able to do it. Obviously, Rex was doing the Pantera thing. And, you know, that's, you know what I mean? That's, that's phenomenal. We, we're doing some shows with them in Europe coming up next month. Um, and But obviously, they, they weren't able to do the live stuff. So I had to make adjustments, you know, accordingly. Um, and that's fine. That's just what you do. They, obviously, if it happened again where someone couldn't do it, you you make adjustments moving forward. I mean, I think Steve Harris has done that a few times in his career. You know what I mean? That's what you do. You, if someone can't do something, you 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 have to make adjustments and move forward. That's what that's what happens. But I was just fortunate enough to have those guys on the record along with me and Ronnie, um, and then got Christopher and Davey in. Uh, moving forward the band um obviously they're from accept and uriah heap um so they're they're from legacy bands as well so um hopefully we can take that dna and that torch from those bands and take it on into the future you know and you are about to hit the stage for the very first time soon right as, as you said already um did you guys have a chance to practice it as a band and does it feel like a proper band already because i mean you said yourself that it was it started off as a side project but now it's kind of grown into this whole new entity of its own yeah the guys came over i was going to say last month but it was in march now the time's moving so quickly <laughs> uh, they came over um and we had, we had a few things to do over here in nashville so we had a few rehearsal dates we've got a few more rehearsals coming up before before the dates in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and obviously the, the more you play together, you can, in my opinion, you can rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. You play live together, that's where everything gets ironed out and the band becomes a band. So, uh, you know, you make mistakes and you learn from them. The, the songs evolve and the band evolves together from playing live. That's, you know, you can't, I don't think you can get that from rehearsing. You can rehearse for four months and you're not, And then you can go out on, on the road and after a week, you've covered more ground than you would have. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, you, you learn so much more in front of people in live situations about the band and who you are as a band. So I'm looking forward to getting a few rehearsals out the way again. But to answer your question, yeah, we have rehearsed and it sounds great, but I'm looking forward to getting out there and playing in front of people and connecting with the people. What works, what doesn't, what can we make better live and how can we make these songs grow and evolve? And then you know, get inspired to go in and do the second record, um, you know, and what comes from those experiences as a band, you know, it only makes you stronger. So that's what I'm about as a band, you know. Talking about touring and how this will work together when Priest gets back on the road. Um, did you think about that already? Because I'll be honest with you, man, you scared us uh, when was it, 14 months ago or no, a bit more already. Yeah, a year and a half. <laughs> you did scare us a lot, man, uh, all of us. Uh, and we don't want anything like that to happen ever again. I'll be very, very honest with you, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, do you think that when Priest will be back on the road and you have this new band, which hopefully will grow into, you know, something huge very, very soon, Um, and you will have to kind of combine the touring schedules. Do you think uh, this will not come as an issue for Priest or for Weapons? Well, obviously, I don't think Elegant Weapons is any uh, any conflict with, with Priest. Priest is a legendary act for the last half a century. But I, I don't know if I'll be able to go between the two. I think if it's on a Priest cycle, it's a Priest cycle, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what we need to, you know... Uh, focus on when priest is out but hopefully i think i think the, the 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 goal here is while we've got this time we release the release the, the album we do some dates we do as much as we can we lay the foundations mm -hmm. for elegant weapons so that when when we can we can come back to it do another album do another round of dates and we, we've sown the seeds mm -hmm. for the birth of what can carry on into the future. Um, obviously, we're all in our own respective bands. We're, Chris is with Accept, Dave is with your right hip, Ron is uh, with the, out with Michael coming up. So um, and until, you know, this band is, what's the word? Um, obviously, those bands are still going. You know, hopefully, Elegant Weapons reaches a point where it can be the main band. Um, You know, if Rob calls me up one day and says, oh, that's it, you know, we're going to retire. Hopefully we've laid the groundwork with Elegant Weapons where we that can take over and move into the future. Um, so that's what I, that's that's the goal. And hopefully that will happen one day. I, who knows? Maybe you'll be touring with two bands like Steve is doing right now. You know, he'll be doing 
Iron Maiden gig, and then a day before that, he'll be doing British Lion and playing football in between. And <laughs> he's 67. <laughs> I'd, dude, I'd, I'd be well up for it, to be honest with you. I'd, I'd be well up for it. I mean, there it'd be. I mean, Steve, he's a he's a freak of nature, man. He's he's such an inspiration. He's he's one of the reasons. I mean, you know, he's he's one of the reasons that I do this on more than one level. Obviously, I, I got the gig with Lauren through Steve, um, and and on another level. Someone asked me um, what I try to bring to the live experience. It's, it's Steve. If you go, you know, you go to a, a maiden yeah. gig. Steve's looking at you. He's singing at you, and he's interacting with you. You can't get that from YouTube. You can't get that from the internet. So it's a magical thing. And I love Steve, and he's an inspiration. And dude, going out doing that British Lion stuff is. I think we're playing with them. We're playing with them in Europe somewhere. Really? Oh. So hopefully, I get to see him. That's awesome. Um, awesome. I love the uh, the cut scenes you do, by the way, on some of your videos. When it's, it's, it's outrageous, <laughs> brilliant. That's my but, um, <laughs> hey, brilliant. But no, I love him. I lo he's, uh, you know, he, everyone should be working that hard. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Steve is a beast, man. And uh, um, the talking about you know you and Steve, I actually saw you first time back in two thousand what it was eight in Costa Rica, opening for Maiden uh, with Lauren. And uh, you know back then I had no idea who Lauren Harris was. You know I'll be sure. very honest with you, but I remember a lot of people around me being like, "Oh, look at that guitarist!" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't tell him. Rip ripping off, ripping off Zach Wild, Michael Schenker, and Dave Murray. That's all you can do, and I'm still doing that. But um. No, again, I was fortunate to be there. I'm fortunate to still be here talking to you. But that was, um, again, that was because of Steve and Steve's uh, faith in his daughter and his input. And uh, we learned a lot from from that. You know, again, we made mistakes and, and we made, we had challenges and we rose to them. She rose to them. It was an education for everyone, you know, not only her, but us as seasoned musicians as well. So it was a great experience and uh, one I'll never forget. And do you, by the way, talk, keep in touch with Steve right now? I mean, do you, you know, do you call him out for advice or something? Oh, do you know what? I was actually thinking about doing that. I had a conversation with my other half. I needed some advice about something. And she said, why don't you call Steve? So I might do that. Um, so I actually saw him. We were in Copenhagen last year. Uh, and we were staying at the same hotel and we were in the bar and, and they came in. And so we hung out for a little bit and we, you know, we had a good uh, chin wag. Yeah. Me, Steve, Nico was there. Bruce and Adrian were there. Didn't see Davey. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we cross paths every now and again. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to this um, Days of Future Past stuff because Somewhere in Time is my favourite record. So, Steve. and it's always been... I mean, I think I think you say it's always been underrepresented, yeah. um, you know, for various reasons. So it would be good for them to get out and play some songs off that, you know, somewhere in time. Are they going to play Alexander the Great? Who knows? It would be great if they do. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to looking forward to it. All right, let's go back to to the elegant weapons and um, and the uh, sorry for wandering you off, man. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I love it. I, don't I do that. You know that. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's outrageous. So talking about elegant weapons and the upcoming record. Okay. Yeah. You're going to hate me for what I'm about to say here. Okay. But the singles you've released, and if you think about it, this is a very much of a compliment. I'm, you know, giving this to the record. But the singles... I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Yes. Why? Sure. So, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. Those are not my favorite songs from the record i'll just put it like this i think the other uh, tracks and i think you know i i've enjoyed the first single you did you know i liked the second one at least twice as much and then when i heard the rest of the record i was like wow so um why why did you decide to go with those two songs to represent elegant weapons that's a great question um well I'll tr I'll try and I'll try and give my, give what I think is the answer. One of my favorite songs on the record is seven and a half minutes long. It's it's uh it's White Horse. <laughs> you can't put that out as a single mm -hmm. in this day and age. I mean, you could, but we're not Queen, you know. So we we wouldn't get a pass. It wouldn't get listed. We'll have to edit it. It, it wouldn't make any playlists anywhere. Um, so there are songs on there that are potentially quote unquote better than those ones, but you couldn't put them out as singles. Um, 
I think the next one, uh, I don't know if you've heard the next one, the next single's Horns for a Halo. That's one of my favourite songs oh, on, on the record. Um, Do or Die, I think it has more of uh, a priest DNA. Mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of to show um, where the, you know, the, you know, priest fans, there's a connection with the, with, with priests somewhere. Um, uh, and Blind Leading the Blind, label and management they 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 were adamant that that one was the first single so you've got to go you know sometimes you've got to be uh um diplomatic and you know they know they know what they're doing so you know it's that sort of thing you know you've got to be a team player um and it's sometimes not to get back onto maiden and priest but sometimes the singles that they release aren't the best songs on the record but they they do the job that the single should do and mm -hmm. um, hopefully it announces the record it gives the flavor of the band and hopefully you go and get the record and discover better songs on there if it was the other way around and you, you released the best songs and then you, you bought the album mm -hmm. and it was worse than the singles then that would be crap too yeah. you know so i think um uh, you release songs that are good they represent the record um, and they're quote unquote singles yeah. in single format, then hopefully you go and buy the record and there's songs that are even better. So uh, I think that's the best way to do it. If yeah. that, if that kind of answers you, your question. I hope you don't hate me for that, man, though. But uh, this is just how no, I, I get felt. It. And I completely agree with you. And this, this is what I loved about this record. You know, I had a certain level of expectations after hearing the first two singles, but then, you know, which was, don't get me wrong. I, it's not like I didn't like them. I did like them, but it's just for me the rest of the album is uh, is even stronger than the ones you did so so congrats to this well I, I mean i appreciate your honesty and i think i'd rather go for that than someone buy the record and be let down by it right. than, yeah. but, you know I, i'd rather them hear the record or hear the singles buy the record and be uh pleasantly surprised by it. The, the songs on the record are even better than the singles I, i'd rather have that dynamic than the opposite to be honest Absolutely, absolutely, man. And I, well, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I think there's songs on the record that are better than the ones we released, for sure. I think there is a couple of questions we have to ask about Priest that so many fans are just longing to get the answer yeah. to. In addition to a new album with Elegant Weapons, we know for sure that you guys, you know, are almost done with the with the new Judas Priest record, uh, which of course yes. will most likely come out, um, you know, in 2024, I assume, right? More or less. Hopefully. I assume so. I mean, I'm only making that assumption based on the manufacture of vinyl these days. I know mm -hmm. the vinyl takes between six and nine months yep. to manufacture, and we're in June already. So uh, I know we've got to mix the record, we've got to master the record. Um, if we if we submitted the record today after me and you got off this call and we gave it to the record label, and it took six months for the for the vinyl, we're still going to be at Christmas. So. You know, and you don't want to release it in you know first days of January, or, you know, or something like that. More. Exactly. So, so we, we can estimate. Yeah. You know. Unless it is Defenders of the Faith, which somehow got released, which is my favorite album. You know that, and yours. Me too. <laughs> As yeah. Well. yeah. Well, it got released on what? Like first days of January, I think. Like fourth or third of January. Weird. <laughs> Did you really? I didn't know that. Wow. Well, okay. But man. Tell us a bit about the sound, uh, and I know you've spoken a lot about the progressive influences, yada, 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 about this, but tell us just a bit about, you know, what will Priest, after everything they did, you guys did, well, for 53 years already, you know, yeah. will sound like, and will it incorporate, you know, the different eras and genres of Priest? Because no two albums of Priest sound the same, to me at least, right? And uh, you can find something to enjoy in all of them. But after you guys did the Epitaph tour, after you guys did the 50 Heavy Metal Years tour, in which you finally, by the way, thank you so much, gave credit so many, un, uh, you know, um, underappreciated songs, uh, like sound <laughs> stuff like that. Will you guys incorporate a bit of the older sound in it as well to make it somewhat of a, I don't know, priest history journey for all the fans? Because... I mean, I hope that Judas Priest will release 10 more albums at least. But, yeah. um, you know, realistically, one, two, three, you know, hopefully more. It's difficult, you know. I think it's uh, I think it's hard. I, I can't speak for them, but I, I can only... I can only kind of imagine, like, for, for Rob and Glenn, you know, as creators of the stuff, 
they don't want to recreate they don't want to redo they don't want to kind of rip themselves off you know they've already done stuff like if we did a, an album that sounded like killing machine and and went back and referenced stuff from the past on purpose i think creatively there's no there's no satisfaction in that you know um for them you know as a fanboy sitting there writing yeah let's do that because it sounds like killing machine you know but there's no there's I, I can understand there's no artistic satisfaction for them they've already done that so there's and it will be the same for me with redeemer of souls firepower we've already done that so you don't want to be seen to be repeating yourself or you know it, it's not very artistically satisfying um so there's a, there's always a drive to do something new even if it sounds like something from your past i don't think that's where the, the, the drive comes from mm -hmm. it, it's just who you are you know so if me and you were going to write a song together some of it someone would say that sounds a bit priesty well yeah because it's, it's coming from the yeah. fucking priest guitar player and the, and in you and yeah. you love priest and it's going to sound priesty um but we were trying to write something that sounds like us but it comes from the dna so i think if it sounds you know what i'm trying to say so if if it sounds like something from the past it references something from the past i think that the the impetus the driving force was to sound like something new mm -hmm. somehow um but it's who you are as a character it's who you are as a me rob and glenn it's going to sound a certain way so um then you've got um Andy and Tom um, and the drive is to do something new and I think if we if we recorded an album that sounded like Killing Machine li like literally sounded like the riffs were the same and the, the same amplifiers I don't know if that would be fulfilling to them and I don't know if the fans would really it would be they're just they're just ripping off Killing Machine mm -hmm. So would that is that really what people want to hear? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Or if you put a drum sound out today that sounds like the drum sound from Screaming for Vengeance, would that be appropriate in 2023? Probably not. But like at the time, we, we're kind of connected with these sounds and these songs and we love them for it. But if 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 someone put a record out today that sounded that drum sound, it wouldn't it wouldn't stand up you know i don't know what i'm trying to say but I, I, um so i think you've got to you've got to do what inspires you today creatively sonically artistically and go forward and if it sounds like something or references the past that's because of who you are as a musician and as a musical character and that's a lot of words there but that's what i'm trying to say so i think you've got to go forward so Richie, um, i think you just calmed uh, me and so many um, Judas Priest fans down. Because I'll be honest with you, and I speak about that a lot, one thing that we, one of the things which we absolutely love about Judas Priest is the whole fact that Judas Priest never replicated themselves, right? After enormous success of uh, British Steel, the guys went on to, you know, point of entry and then Screaming for Vengeance and then Turbo, you know, you know, Defenders in between, of course. But, you know, it's, the band never stopped evolving. And with Firepower, which, you know, many consider one of the greatest albums that you guys did at least in 30 something years, right? I mean, it's, you know, one more time, one more step forward. You know, because after several interviews, I, I've read a lot of comments and I receive a lot of priest, uh, you know, comments in my email and stuff. There were a lot of scares that this will sound like and then insert a blank, you know, some people said Nostradamus, some others said something, whatever else. Uh, so I think this is, this is, this is a great answer. And I think this is great in general, that this will be um, another step forward instead of, you know, reminiscence of just older days. Well, let me, it doesn't sound like Nostradamus. Let me tell you that. I can tell you that. A thousand percent. <laughs> no, I know it doesn't that. Sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a, is a very underrated album. I think if you put it on and you listen to it today, for those who haven't done that in a long time, please consider doing that. Believe me, you will most likely enjoy it a lot. No, I agree. I, I think it is underrated. I think it's a different 
I think it's a different take on a, a priest record, but I, I do think it's underrated, and I, I do think it's uh, it's worth a listen for sure. How is Glenn, by the way? I forgot to ask, but this is very important to everyone. How is Glenn doing? Do you keep in touch right now? And uh, you know, how is he holding up? Well, I spoke to management yesterday, uh, and they they spoke to him. They said he's doing okay. Um, as you can imagine, it's one of those things. It's up and down. You know, good days and bad days. Um, but he seems to, he seems to be doing okay. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those challenges that some days is is uh, is on, and some days he, he's not so on. You know, it's just one of those things, man. And people, I think that as far as I'm aware, they do they react to it in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so uh, it's like you know sometimes sometimes he's able to come out on the road and play some songs with us. Sometimes he's not, and I think that's an indication of what it's like. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So, but I think in general he's doing okay. Yeah, I mean he sounded great uh, at Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, and it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. yeah. He, sometimes he surprises us. You know, sometimes he he. Uh, he turns up and he plays and it's like, okay. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, he's doing fine, you know. And was he able to really record all of his parts for the new album without any extra help? Yeah. He recorded all the, all, all, well, yeah, all the, all the parts he could. Yeah. Um, I think he's still got a few parts that he, he needs to do. I don't think they're, they're all done. Um, but yeah, he was able to do it. If he couldn't, if he couldn't play, he would do it through me. So he would, he would, kind of translate ideas and stuff through me and I'd play them um, uh, on the writing stages anyway. Well, Glenn is a fighter and we all love him and uh, we all wish him the best. He's a, an integral part of not only Priest, but heavy metal family worldwide. And uh, Glenn, we love you, honestly. Thousand percent, man, absolutely. Well, Richie, I can keep you here forever, but um, there is a time limit to these things, uh, at least so people tell me. Uh, so in order to close this, do you mind sharing one of the craziest stories or one of those stories that you cherish the most um, from the time on the road together with Priest? Maybe one of those, you know, early days stories when you were still afraid to go up on stage uh, with Judas Priest. Well, I'll tell you, let me tell you a story. It's not a scary stage one. Let me tell you a story. Yeah. I've never told anyone this. All right. We were taking off out, uh, we were taking off on a plane outside out of either LaGuardia or uh, JFK, one of the New York uh, airports. And me and Rob were looking out the window and Rob was filming the takeoff out of his plane. And we saw over the city was a silver disc, right? Mm -hmm. It was a silver, like a, like a ball. Yeah. Uh, and we were taking off over, I don't know if it was Central Park or one of the parks. And it was a, it was a silver disc and it, it was uh, like a ball, like a sphere. And it was, you could see it was spinning uh, and he filmed it. He filmed it flying over, the, and it was kind of stationary yeah. over the city. Um, I don't know if this is what you asked for, but I'll, no, I'll no, give no, you I'm one. really curious. <laughs> <laughs> did did like glass doctor, yeah. doctor, please? <laughs> yeah, honestly, and it was over the, and, uh, and what happened was he filmed this disc hovering over the city. Can't remember if it flew away or whatever. And we watched it we, on his phone afterwards and he got the footage. And I remember a couple of years later, uh, I texted him. I said, "If you still got that footage of that that silver disc that you filmed flying off over in New York," he said, "No, I deleted it." So yeah, he had literal UFO footage on his phone, and he deleted it by mistake. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's uh, a, a story for you. This is so, yeah. I mean, I'm not one of those conspiracy the uh, theorists at all. Like, believe no, me neither. <laughs> but this is freaky. Yeah, but there it was. I mean, I, I mean. Could it have been something like a, you know, they say it's like weather balloons or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but it was a silver disc kind of like, I don't know if it was spinning or it was hovering over the city as we flew off over, a, you know, on a, an airplane. So, uh, so yeah. And he deleted it. Well, thank you so much, Reishi, for finding time, joining me today. Any last message uh, to all the metal pilgrims? Anything you want to share with us? Well, obviously, see you uh, in Europe very soon, hopefully, when uh, Elegant Weapons come over. Stay safe, man. Stay strong and uh, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, hopefully see you very soon and uh, keep the family safe. And uh, hopefully this is all over soon and uh, we get to see you at a show as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Richie, for all the nice words, for all the support and for everything, brother. I appreciate it a lot, man. This was Richie Faulkner of Judas Priest and Elegant Weapons. Don't forget the new Elegant Weapons, the debut record, is coming out next Friday. So make sure to check it out. I'm sure you will absolutely love it. Richie, thank you so much, brother.
Keep rocking, man. Thank you, Brock.